Children of God, welcome to another online Holy Communion class. We're making our way toward May, um, actually late April, when we will have our Holy Communion worship celebration. And many of you will receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the first time. Well, that is called a sacrament, receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This sacred thing that we participate in that ushers us into the presence of God. Well, there's another sacrament that we are going to be talking about today, and that is the holy sacrament of baptism. So I want you to pause for just a moment and go ask mom or dad about your own baptism. Ask them, when was I baptized? What did I wear? Who was there? Maybe they have some pictures. Uh, maybe they have some great memories for you. And then come on back to me and we'll continue on in what we're going to talk about today. Okay, I hope you were able to ask mom and dad about your own baptism. And as we move forward, um, we're going to talk about how Jesus's baptism relates to yours. Yeah. But first, I wanna share with you um, my firstborn son's baptism, some of the things that um, we have remembered from his baptism. That's Peter, some of you know him. And the first is actually what he wore. Now. Underneath this, he just had on some really nice church clothes, but at our church, we uh, baptized him in a Lutheran church in Chicago. He wore this white um, cloth, and what's great about it is actually it still fits him today, and I know that because it fits me. Um, every December 7th, we celebrate Peter's baptism. That's the day that he was baptized, and we put this back on him, and we walk through the rites of baptism. So the words we use in that baptism ceremony, we remind him of his baptism. We also light a candle. And if you can see it right here, it's got an uh, alpha, so that's a Greek letter, alpha and omega, meaning the beginning and the end. This is how God describes himself as the beginning and the end. And then a dove. And we're going to talk about why that dove is on this candle. As we hear from the Bible about Jesus's baptism, Mark 1, 9 through 11. One day, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and he was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And when Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens split open and the Holy Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son, and I am fully pleased with you. In Jesus' baptism, he is acknowledged as the son of God, right? The Holy Spirit descends upon him. He is glorified in that moment. And those witnesses around him see that. They can see, oh. This is no mere man, but meaning he's not just a man. He's not only a man. This is the son of God. And we now describe that as Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man in one person, right? He is God, the savior. So what does his baptism have to do with your baptism? Well, his baptism makes your baptism effective. Now, you might be wondering what that word means. It makes it work. It makes it stick. It makes it real. Because Jesus, a man, right? Fully God, fully man, was baptized. Your baptism now is drawn up into his. Because the Spirit came to him, the Spirit comes to you because you are united to Jesus in your baptism. I'm going to say that part again. What happens in your baptism? You are united to Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And so the sky opens up and the Father looks upon you and he says, You are my child and I am well pleased with you. Is it because of you? that he says that? No, it's because of Jesus. And here's why that is so comforting. 
that is comforting because it means that nothing you can do can ever destroy that bond. Nothing you can say can ever take Jesus from you. This is a gift of God to you. You have assented to it. You have said yes to it. And therefore, you are united to Jesus forever. Nothing can destroy that. That's so comforting to me, especially in my life. When I make mistakes, when I sin, right? I have to repent. I have to turn from those sins. I confess and I know I am forgiven. I know that forever I am united to Jesus, the Savior of the world. And though I still sin, I will always be forgiven if I say, Lord, I'm sorry, and I turn away from those sins. That is a promise that we can always hold in our hearts. And our baptism solidifies that promise. It says yes to that promise. So let's look at those baptismal rites that are found in your right to book. So the blue side, right to, remember this is our liturgy, our order of service. Baptism doesn't happen every single service. Remember when we learned about the processional, right? How we come in to the worship service? That happens every time. A lot of the things in this book happen every single Sunday. It's the order of our worship. But baptisms are special. They happen sometimes, especially around Easter. Many Christians choose to be baptized around Easter, and I'm sure you can guess. It's a very sacred time, right? A time full of hope and joy. A time where the old man dies with Christ and the new man is risen. And so I'd like you just to look briefly. I want you to review this actually with um, mom and dad. And you'll see that on page um, 12, actually, is what I want you to see, is page 12 through 15, you'll see a picture. And that picture has a priest who has vestments on, right? The clothing of the priest. There's a mom and a dad there. And there's what looks to be maybe a little sister and an acolyte holding the Bible. Notice the baptismal font, kind of like the word fountain, font. Um, the priest is putting his hands in that water and he asks God to make it holy. And that's the water that the baby is then baptized with. And I wanted to share just a little bit with you from Father Mark. He's going to read the baptismal rites to you um, as he pours out that water from our font. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember your baptism? I remember mine. My parents had me baptized when I was three, and maybe it's because I'm a pastor, because I've been a priest all these years. At least in my mind's eye, I remember my baptism and that day. But I'll tell you who does remember your baptism, even if you don't. God the Father. God the Son, God the Holy Spirit remembers your baptism. It's through your baptism that you are adopted into God's family. 
And God never forgets the promise that he makes over you at your baptism. He will hold you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So going back um, to some of our uh, readings here, 12 through 15, again, I'd like you to review these with your parents. It'd be wonderful if you walked through them together, especially on this Sunday. And here is why. January 10th is actually, um, we're celebrating Epiphany, of course, the season of Epiphany, but we're also celebrating the baptism of the Lord Jesus. And so when we celebrate his baptism, we are to remember our own. Remember, his baptism makes our baptism real, right? So when you go through on page 13, you can see the baptismal covenant. It asks certain questions that you, if you were old enough to, said yes to, or your parents said yes to you, yes to them for you on your behalf if you were a baby. Um, as you continue to walk through, you'll see some prayers, and then you'll also see the baptism there. So I'd love for you to review this with mom and dad. I'd love for you to learn more about your own baptism. But that is our lesson today. It's on baptism. And I am so glad that you were baptized, that you are a part of the family of God, and that in um, April, you will be receiving the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, another holy sacrament. See you next week.